so because we're home for a little while, we are going to be making a freestanding found object abstract sculpture. We're going to be using cardboard, magazines, if you would like to use paint, you can do that, um, paper, found paper, whatever you really want to do is just fine with me. So what you're going to do first is you are going to figure out what you'd want to do for your design. Do you want to make a word? Do you want to make shapes? Or do you want to um, make something that has to do with what's going on right now? So it's your choice. What I'm doing right here is I'm figuring out what I would want to do for my sculpture. So I wrote my name out to see if that was something that I would want to do. Um, and then after that, I am going to try shapes of some sort. I'm going to be doing hearts and then circles and see what that would look like. Um, right here I'm cutting it so you guys can see how you can um, attach to each other. So you have to use scissors and cut um, each shape out um, and attach them to one another. So you can see this one that I did and I'm, I'm seeing if it stands. So if you'd want to do a word, your name, that would be fine. So there I am with my word. Uh, this next one, hearts. I mean, if you want to do something that has to be like, to do with like Among Us, you could do that. I know a lot of you are really into that game. So it might be interesting to do a bunch of little um, creatures or robots or whatever they, they would be. I don't really know what they are. You'd have to tell me. Um, but that would be fine. You guys could do that. Um, and then, um, if you want to um, add other shapes to one another, you can. So, um, if you want to do like hearts and stars, or your favorite shapes, or even just abstract shapes, I'm cool with any one of those. So, it's your choice. So here I am attaching it. If you want to try just add a paper just to see what it looks like, you can do that. Okay, so that's why I'm showing you some examples of how you guys could do this. Okay, this last one, I am going to be doing circles. See the hearts that they're all together. This next one is circles, cutting them out, and then um, putting them together. So same idea as the word and the shapes but I am doing it a little bit differently. And remember when you're joining two shapes together, you have to cut both of them in order to put them up um, right. If you want uh, to get a really nice circle, you can use anything from home, like uh, you can trace something from home, we all, you can also take um, something that is straight, like um, a piece of cardboard or even um, just a string, tie them together and you can make circles. If you need me to show you how to do that in class today, I can, I can do that for you. Alright, so here I am. Just about have that one done. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the circles on this. So now that I kind of figure out what I figured out what I want to do, I'm going to be using um, a cardboard box that I have at home. Uh, if you have a cereal box, it'd be a little bit easier to use, especially for my um, sixth and seventh graders. This might be a little bit easier. If you have cardstock at home, this would also be a little bit easier. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this cardboard, you're going to draw your shapes um, on it or a word into shapes and then you're going to cut it all out all right so i have a criteria for uh, sixth and seventh graders you are going to have at least uh, 15 pieces my eighth graders at least 20 and then my high schoolers have to do at least 30. so that's the difference so i found some objects and i'm going to draw circles with them so it just gives you a good idea of what you could do uh, with the circles. Um, I also showed you that you can uh, draw a shape with a utensil such as uh, some netting that I have from produce. So you can see that too. So draw out your shapes, whatever it would be. I'm using a sharpie, you can use a pen. 
We want a larger uh, shape. Um, you can put it so that it stays connected. And then you can hold it down and draw it around. So that's one way you can create a circle. Pretty helpful. Um, and then I also made another circle. I actually didn't use that one um, in the long run. I am making this video work with a train going by, so if you hear that, sorry. Once I have my whole thing completely um, drawn in, I'm going to start cutting it out with my scissors. If you were older and you're, you're able to use an X-Acto knife, that might be a little bit easier. I'm counting my circles to see if I have enough. Um, right now I have 30, 31 circles that I made, so um, I am exceeding the high school um, minimum. If you want to make more, if you're in junior high and you want to make more, go for it. If you are in high school and you want to make 40 shapes, that's your choice um, and how you, will, you want your project to look. So here I am going to be cutting. So I uh, saved you from that. You don't have to watch me cut. So here are my shapes. I'm counting them out just to make sure I have enough. And here I go. And 31. I have 31. Okay, so I have 31. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to design these. Um, you guys can use paint. You can use magazines. Um, and you're going to be gluing the magazines. If you have magazines or paper that you want to color, um, make these colorful with, you could do that. But if you have um, paint at home, that might be a little bit easier to do. To paint them and then uh, go from there but I'm using magazines I'm trying to find out what um, patterns I like the best and um, just flipping through them some of them I use text I like the idea of using text with them so like I said it's your choice you can paint you can use um, you can even use fabric if you have fabric at home that might be fun so you decide and um, go from there one thing that you have to do is you have to glue your cardboard to your paper. So this is what I'm doing. This is an easy way to do it. So if you take your cardboard and and you just get a piece, you can do that, or you can um, you can trace, cut them out, and then glue them to your paper. So I'm just showing you different ways you can do that. So I'm cutting out the designs that I like the best so far. And then you have to glue the other side too. Okay, um, you can kind of push it down so it's not um, doesn't bubble bubble up. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing for the my large one, so it doesn't bubble up. Uh, you can also cut it afterwards. That would be something. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where the shape is. So this is another way you could do it. So basically I'm just showing you different ways you can glue it down. So just to make it easier, but you can test it out, figure, figure out what works best for you, and then use that uh, throughout your project. So I have two already. So I'm gonna put those off to the side and do the rest. Okay, so now I have all of them done. So I, I um, put some magazines on each of them. They're all really different. So I had different magazines. I had art magazines, and my college magazine that comes to me, and I have um, a swim magazine too. So those are the things that I was using. And now I'm putting them in different piles so that I know what shapes I can be using and uh, what shapes I might want to use first versus the ones that are last. I'm going to use the larger ones first. And like I did before, I'm going to be cutting the or each shape um, and joining them together. So I'm trying to figure it out. 
you can lay it all out if you want to to see what it looks like for um, for you first and then go from there okay like I did before I showed you how to join them so I'm just cutting my cardboard then cutting my other cardboard and then connecting the two this makes it pretty stable in the end if you want to glue this together you can some of you have hot glue at home that might be something that you'd want to use um, but I didn't use any glue to keep it standing but in in the end it should be freestanding if you want to uh, try to uh, make yours look like Alexander Calder uh, you could do that uh, he does mobiles so uh, I can show you one of those one-on-one -on -one if you'd like um, but this one is basically going off of um, some abstract artists works so I'm joining them I made one piece then I made another and then I connected them both so I made a large piece then another large piece and put them together it's easier to work larger than it is smaller on this so I know that some of you might want to try to make yours really really tiny but it's probably not the best idea the best better idea is to make it a little bit larger all right so now I'm showing you that I'm going to be connecting them together um, I'm cutting some more I'm making a um, pattern with some of the shapes the smaller shapes and I'm going to be connecting them and right now I'm balancing seeing if I put too much weight on one side or the other and I'm fixing that balance so this is kind of a physics lesson with art as well Okay, so I'm just playing with it and seeing what works and what doesn't and then uh, putting it together. So in the end, this is what, what mine looks like. I didn't really intend to have the swimmer to be like the most uh, dominant feature, but it ended up doing having that. Um, and I, I like it that way. Uh, it's freestanding. So it stands on its own. Um, there's a lot of beautiful negative space. So you can see those neat shapes around it and behind it. Um, so that could be something that you think about when you are creating yours. If you have any questions about this, um, I need you to email me. You cannot send a message to me through Google Classroom because I won't get it. Um, but I would be happy to help you with anything that you need. And if you don't have those materials at home, we can figure something out. So don't think that you can't do this assignment. We'll figure out something to make your project successful and as creative as you want to be for this project. I look forward to seeing what you guys create and um, I can't wait to see all your beautiful photographs that you're going to send me. Please, when you are ready to take your photograph, have a blank backdrop and take a photograph. Thank you.